That's the memo. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How do we do that? And in our study of Jesus, you know, Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 2 that Jesus left an example that we should follow in his steps. It's a new theology. It's so shocking and new to many of you that it's a new theology. But Peter simply said, be like Jesus. Forget about your likenesses and be Christ-like. Now, <laughs> what did Jesus do? There is a psychology today that says that what Mike Dial is doing is psychologically incorrect. Well, guess what it is? It is psychologically incorrect, but it's theologically correct. Amen. There is an idea of a, of a Jesus that didn't exist. He's been created by progressives and liberals and, and socialists, but he's not the Jesus of the Bible. I talk about, I represent the Jesus of the Bible. What did he say? What did he do? And one big thing he did, people write me all the time in my comments, and they're like, Brother Mike, don't name names publicly. Don't call out false teachers and false pastors in public. Don't call them names. And they're like, well, Jesus wouldn't do that. Jesus would, but, but when you read the Bible, when you read the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that is exactly what Jesus did. Now, Jesus named names, and Jesus name-called. He constantly called people names, and he constantly engaged in name-calling. And the record and the facts support what I'm saying. You can check it, but it's true, and we're going to document it. And the fact that Jesus practiced such behavior means it cannot be sin. So, in our message today, I'm going to tell you 60 things. Yeah, I said 60, <laughs> and I'm going to be quick. 60 things that Jesus called his generation. That's my title. 60 things that Jesus called his generation. And, you know, what he said then, he said today, because Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's a big word. God is immutable, meaning he can't change. His Bible, his word, his truth, morality cannot change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he was saying it about his generation 2,000 years ago, he's saying the same thing about this generation. So what would Jesus say now about the sin and about the sinners in this generation that doesn't want to hear about sin? Look, let me repeat this again. It's not sin. If the name that you call someone is right and not wrong, the question is, is it accurate? Is it accurate? Is it correct? Speaking truth, speaking the truth in love is never sin. But not speaking the truth when you know it is truth is always sin. So I never gossip. I never accuse. I never spread rumors. I never spread hearsay because that's heresy. But like Jesus, I deal with facts. I don't attack, but I speak facts. Telling the truth is not mean. It is not being unkind. So I look in the camera and I say that God says, if you don't want to do it my way, then hit the road, Jack. Hit the highway. Amen. In Christ's house, in God's house, under God's roof, there are house rules. And if you're going to live in the Father's house, you've got to follow his rules, his roof, his rules, my house, my rules. So our text said, consider Jesus. And I want to move real quickly today. And I want to talk to you about, it's part one. We'll probably divide this up and do part one and part two. The 60 things Jesus said, about his generation. And for each one, I'm going to give you a Bible text. Now, if we sat here in front of this fire <laughs> and we looked up each one of the 60, we'd be here till Jesus comes. Amen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you the word or the phrase that he called his generation. And then I'm going to give you a Bible verse. And the, the amazing thing about streaming video or videotape is you can rewind doop, and you can take notes and you can do your homework under Professor Mike, and you can look up the verses for yourself so you know I'm not making this stuff up. Look, I'm not that good. I didn't write the Bible. I just know the one who did, and you can pry this Bible out of my cold, dead, Bible-thumping hands. Amen. 
Praise God. So what did Jesus call his generation? Well, first of all, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 7, number one, Jesus called them hypocrites. Two, he called them heathen, pagan. Three, he called them vain. <laughs> he was speaking to the publicans in the Bible. You know, I thought it was funny the other day. Jesus preached to a lot of publicans. I preached to a lot of Republicans. Yeah, that's funny. Maybe I'll tell a joke on TikTok someday that y'all will laugh at. I <laughs> know I'm not funny. <laughs> you know the funniest thing about Mike Dial? I think I'm funny. I get my jokes. <laughs> anyway, that's what Jesus said. Now, then he went on in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 26. He called his generation, his generation, his gen, his generation of sin in the first century of sin. We're in the 21st century of sin. In the 1920s, it was the roaring 20s. In the 2020s, it's the whoring 20s. Jesus looked in the face, looked in the eyes of his generation, and he called them fearful. Fearful. What an insult. But it's not an insult if it's coming from God and if it's true. And number five, he said to them in the same passage, he called them, oh, ye of little faith. He put down their faith. He didn't say, oh, you have great faith. No, he said, you're full of doubt and unbelief. He said, oh, ye of little faith. And he says the same thing to us today. And he's not really putting you down, but he is putting you in your place. Oh, ye of little faith. In other words, you shouldn't believe God, but you don't. And then in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 6, he called them lost. Well, today in modern theology, if you listen to the megachurch and the media church pulpits, the lost are no longer lost. They don't have to be converted. They don't have to...